There are 150 tameable creatures in Ark, and I am going to try to tame them all in 100 days. I'm going to try to do this on an official server. What? That's right, official servers where crashes and rollbacks are part of the challenge. Wait, wait, no, 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 please don't crash. Ah, uh, yep, there it is. Not to mention the extremely long taming times. Dude, five hours to tame this thing with berries? Yep, we're gonna need to get some kibble. I'll be attempting to tame all 150 creatures listed in the dodo decks. That means I have to tame all four titans. It also means I have to defeat not one, not two, but seven bosses, including the almighty Fenris Sulphur, in order to obtain Fenrir via a cryopod. Because this is an official server, we gotta set some rules. Because if you didn't know, it takes a hundred hours in real life just to raise a wyvern. What? So, rule number one, one hour does equal one in game day. So it will be 100 hours of gameplay, but the timer only counts when I am logged in. So I can use my logged off time to raise these ridiculously long breeding and raising times of dinos on official one time servers to make this even possible. However, that means for things like the Reaper, I will have to have it inside of me for the full 12 hour, 12 day period. Let's hope I don't lose it. Wait, wait, where's my Reaper? No, 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 no. Rule number two. As mentioned, I must tame the 150 creatures listed in the Dodo decks as tameable, which means I don't have to tame individual variations such as the Aberrant or our variants. Just one of each variation works. For example, I have to get a Crystal Wyvern and a regular Wyvern, but I do not need the Ice, Fire, Poison, for example. I also must keep these dinos all until the very end. So if I lose one for any reason, my fault or the servers, I must retain it. This applies to all except, of course, the Titans who only last 24 hours. Rule number three, this is a solo challenge, meaning no help from any other survivors. I can, however, use traps and structures already built in the world by other tribes if they are unlocked. And of course, I have access to all the maps in the cluster. This is being played on the Xbox official crossplay North America PVE cluster. Day one. Ooh, that's yeah, dark. Let's gamma up. I started out on the island thinking it would be beneficial to do an explorer note run. I knew I was going to need a chemistry bench and eventually an egg incubator to make the grind much less brutal. So I might as well start working towards that with everyone's favorite method to gain quick experience. But before I even did that or literally anything else, I immediately started feeling the pressures of the race against the clock. I've got a lot to tame and not a lot of time. So I decided to tame the easiest thing in the game and if you ask me, the most useless and annoying tame. Bruh, we get it, you're a bird, be quiet. I began gathering up the basic resources needed to start crafting and I got some berries for the dodo. Once it was tamed up, I actually felt accomplished. Not even five minutes in and we're already checking things off the list. But I quickly realized this was foolish because if I were gonna complete this challenge, I needed to keep this dodo all the way until the end. And without a cryopod, there was a 0.0% chance that this would survive. So I abandoned my new pet and I left him to fend for himself as I plunged into the depths. I let myself perish so that I could come back in another location. Once alive, I began making my way towards the start of the XP run. But not even reaching the first explorer note, I was reminded of one of the many challenges of official servers on PvE. This map is absolutely littered with buildings. It is basically impossible to do a note run without a flyer. Unfortunately, this is the only island server on this cluster, and so doing a note run was actually going to be more of a negative than a positive. I decided I mostly just needed to unlock the early train stuff, and I'd be fine. So I said screw it with this, and I moved on. <laughs> So as I was deciding where to make my home base, there was really only one option. It's Genesis 2. I spent the next half day making my way to the obelisk so that I could transfer to the promised land. Well, hello there.
As I blasted off in my super overpowered spacesuit, I floated around looking for a good base location. I took some time to admire the really cool builds. While sometimes the overpopulated arcs can be really annoying, it can also provide a good sense of community. These dedicated folk grinded hard for their stuff and I'd just like to show some appreciation. As I was searching for a base, I noticed Mutagel was out in space. I knew I was going to need a Strider ASAP to help get a base built up, so I went ahead and flew out to space to farm a bit of gel. I needed a bunch of missions, but it's always nice to just have it on hand. So just a few power punches to the rocks, all you need, and I got my gel. I continued to search for my base spot, but I ran into something very peculiar. A spot on the map that was just broken. Weird. I finally settled on a nice elevated area, right near the entrance to space. I quickly farmed up a few basic resources to make myself a foundation and bed, and I called it a day. Day 2. I woke up to my pet dog licking my face. Wait a minute, no, that's not a dog, that's a raptor. And it's not licking my face, it's trying to eat me. I was reminded how important walls are. I think I'll make that a priority for today. Fortunately, it didn't destroy my bed, so I spawned back in and I power punched it to hell. Even though my day was just starting, this arc's nightfall was upon us. I took a few minutes to enjoy the sunset and relax, as I knew I had a long, difficult journey ahead. When night fell, I decided to put the focus back on getting a strider. But in order to do that, I would need missions. I made my way to a terminal and began with my favorite mission, Circuit Chase. It quickly knocked out Gamma and Beta as a refresher, even hitting the leaderboard for Beta. I jumped right into the alpha version of it, and here we go. I continued with some other race missions as they are by far the easiest and quickest to complete. I did the slide and glide. Uh, so, do we get a victory lap? Starwing strike as well. out Gamma, Beta, and Alpha of those missions, and once I got done with that, I had nine missions under my belt, well underway to taming a Strider. But I was still going to need to find a pretty low level Strider, which was going to be difficult. Either way, I decided to put the missions on hold for now. As I was strategizing, I realized how much time it was going to take to birth a Reaper. 12 of my 100 days just to birth this thing, then it has to raise. So yeah, I better get on this one. I decided to shift priority and make my way to Rockwell's Den to see if I could get the Reaper pregnancy started. On many PvE servers, you will find a generously unlocked Reaper trap made for easy impregnating. Sadly, the one on this server was locked. But not a big issue because I didn't even have anything to damage it with, which meant there was only one option. 
I made sure to load up on the sleeping bags and I headed into the heart. It didn't take long to find the Reaper. I led that queen into the pit of acid below and I watched as her health dropped. After many, 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 many deaths. You see, this is why you bring extra sleeping bags. I finally got her to be, well, ready. Fortunately, you get to keep the baby even after death. So, I allowed myself to die so that I could make a quick return to my base. And there we have it. Now, we just gotta wait 12 days. The in-world buff was active, so it was only showing 8 hours, but that will expire before I have time to birth it. This bad boy was definitely going to be inside me for the full 12 days. And the day was just coming to an end, just as I made it back to base. I began the day farming up some basic resources to start building up my base. I knew I needed a forge to begin some metal production, so I crafted up a forge as well as some storage. I saw a Lystrosaurus near my base and I decided to go and get my first actual tame. They are passive and I can just use berries as I farm stuff nearby. I went out to space to gather some metal and started cooking it up. I continued crafting some of the basics so I could get my taming equipment made up. I farmed some meat, split it up, and let it spoil. I also got myself some narco berries going. More old pestle was put down. And once I got my crossbow made up with some arrows and narcotics, I felt ready to start taming some things. But first I had to deal with this stupid Diplo who got caught in my fire. Bro. Really? What are you what are you doing? After wasting a bunch of arrows on it, it finally broke free and I decided to not waste any more time. It's just a diplo, I decided to let it be. Maybe I'll come tame it later. But I knew exactly what I needed to tame first. Even though I have this amazing tech suit, I still needed an even better way to get around. So it was off to taming the king of travel, a Maywing. I decided to forget about the Lystrosaurus. These taming rates are brutal, and this thing was way too high of a level. I decided I would wait until I could be taming multiple things at once. I flew over to the area where there are plenty of Maywings. I found a cool looking one and I knocked it out. It landed in a very awkward spot, but as long as it didn't fall down to the water, I was happy. Off I went to farm up some mutton so I could tame this bad boy up. Once I got it tamed, I named it May May. Perfect name, I know. I then went to take advantage of the Circuit Chase World buff, which gives amazing loot. I decided to farm up some loot, hoping to find some good stuff I could use early on. The number one priority, of course, was a good long neck rifle. Red drops do have them, so I was hopeful. After the first drop, I also ran into a group of dodos. I figured I'd take the two minutes to tame one up just to get it out of the way once again. Just as I finished taming, I made my way to the second drop, and just like that, the overpowered drops of Gen 2 were already blessing me with some good. I got a chemistry bench! Yes! Let's go! Alright! This was huge! I'm gonna need to mass produce narcotics like it's my job, so having this before I'm even close to unlocking it as an engram was massive. I grabbed a couple more drops, but nothing else super notable. When I got back to my base, the Diplo was still nearby, and although it wasn't gonna do any harm, it was a reminder that my stuff is just out in the open, and I could have another raptor attack at any moment. So I decided to get at least some stone foundations and stone walls put up to give me some protection. And just as I finished all that up, the day had come to an end. After crafting just a small amount of stone stuff, I realized how desperately I needed a strider. Farming on one time rates takes so long, and it would make my challenge tremendously easier. And even regular dinos just don't compare because you have to farm everything individually. Whereas with the Strider, I can farm everything all at once. But I needed a few more missions before I could even tame a low level. So I continued on with some more easy race missions. I knocked out the Slipstream Sweep, another super easy mission. I only did Gamma and Beta because I now had enough missions completed to tame a level 20 Strider. 
Now, I just needed to find one. There was one conveniently located right next to the mission terminal, and even though it wasn't the resource harvesting type, I decided I wanted to tame it anyways. It would ease my mind a bit, allowing me to check something off the list. Also, just in case I couldn't find another one, I would at least have this tame checked off. So I went back to my base and grabbed the mutagel, but when I got back and tried to initiate the taming process, it just didn't work. This strider was bugged. Yep, that's the way it goes sometimes in ARC, but honestly, this is probably for the best. I 100% still needed a resource strider, so in reality, this one would have been useless and a waste of time. So I just headed back to base, and I did a quick metal run on my way. I decided I needed to continue to build up some structures so that I could get my tranquilizer production up and running. As I was looking up the resources I needed to get, I was delightfully reminded of the Hexagon store. When starting on Gen, I completely forgot that I would have this at my disposal. This was huge, and after completing those 11 missions, I had a nice buildup of starter hexagons. So I made some purchases and I got some resources crafted. I crafted up one fabricator to put in my newly installed stone base. I also got my generator built up and installed so that I could also put in my chemistry bench that I so luckily found in a drop. Now I could really amp up my narcotics production. Since I didn't have a way to quickly farm berries, I went ahead and made some more purchases. The amount I needed overall was definitely going to require me to get a better method because large quantities can get expensive in the hexagon store. But I bought just enough to get started and I crafted up a good amount of narcotics. I had about a quarter of the day left and as the loot crate buff was coming near its end, I decided to spend the rest of the day farming up some drops. I still needed a bunch of things and this early on everything is going to be valuable to me, as long as I can get a grinder built up. So from loot drop to loot drop with Mei Mei, I got a few ascendant items and as always I may have use for them later on. But the Arc Gods blessed me once again with a much needed late game structure. I got a cooking pot! Woohoo! This is not only unlocked at a higher level, but it's kind of expensive to craft, so finding one was a big win. I saved all the rest of the junk in case I needed it later or so I can grind it in the future. After being satisfied with my cooking bop, I decided to make my way back to base as the day was coming to an end. When I got back, I found a level 50 strider with a drill face that was right next to my base. This was perfect because traveling the map without a skiff is an extremely painstaking process. So the fact that it was near my base was perfect, but I still needed six missions to tame him. I knew going forward I would try to knock these out as quick as possible so I could get the strider before it despawns. After getting a cooking pot and a loot drop, I knew I needed to get it set up ASAP so that I could start my kibble production. I crafted up some pipes to build an irrigation network, but after a few minutes of being reminded how tedious this process is, I decided to abandon the pipes. Instead, I just crafted up some water tanks. It rains a lot on Genesis 2, and I shouldn't need to worry too much about running out of water. Besides, I can always manually fill it up if I absolutely need to. After getting my cooking station set up, I took Mei Mei out for some loot farming. More loot farming. I was still looking for the number one priority of a long neck rifle but there were also still a lot of things that I could use. Hopefully more structures, saddles, and a better shotgun, and so on. And even though I didn't have a grinder yet, I knew eventually I'd be able to grind up all the junk and use it to save myself some time farming resources. But I kept seeing striders all over the map and it made me want to jump back in the mission so that I could tame one for myself. So I completed the alpha version of the Slipstream Sweep, another incredibly easy mission. But because I hit almost every wall, I barely passed it. And thank God too, because I did not want to have to repeat it. I had trouble planning out my next move. I wanted to continue the missions, but a new in-game day was started, which meant different color loot drops. I knew red drops are one of the colors that gives long necks, so I made my way back out to do more loot farming. It never ends. I headed over to Rockwell's side as I had trouble finding any on the Eden side, but after about a half a day of farming I really didn't get anything useful. Some stuff I can grind, but nothing really worth using except for a bunch of fertilizer. Since I don't have a dung beetle yet, this was actually a really nice get. I was disappointed with the rest of the loot and I was getting annoyed. I had to double check to make sure the buff was on because the loot was just really bad. It was, well, I was just having bad luck. So I decided not to waste any more time and head back to base. Now that I have fertilizer, I could get my crops started. So I crafted up some crop lots and I put them down, filled them up, 
and just as I was getting my green thumb on, I had an unfriendly visitor. A nice, low-level raptor. So, instead of killing this one, I grabbed my crossbow and started tranking him. Only takes a couple of shots before he runs away, and one more arrow to down him. I didn't have any meat to tame him, so I slaughtered the nearest dino. Sorry, Mr. Pig. And put some raw meat on him. Taming with meat is extremely slow, even with a low-level raptor. I could have easily flew over and found myself some mutton, but the torpor drain is slow enough and it was mostly safe near my base, so I just decided to let it slowly tame. While I waited, I continued my search for easy tames near my base so I could check off the list. I found another reasonably low level RG, a nice slow torpor drain dino I could just put meat on and let it sit once I knocked it out, just like the raptor. Of course, with my primitive crossbow, it still took a few shots to get it down. But once he started flying away, I made my attack. After a number of hits that didn't count, because, well, that's art, eventually I knocked him out and he dropped. I went back to check my raptor and fed it some narcotics just in case, and as I was going to put some meat on my RG, I got absolutely wrecked by some stupid hyena don. Normally in this scenario, I would be extremely annoyed because they took a good bite out of my RG. But since I don't care about its level, and since they didn't kill me, well, I really didn't care. Still, I wanted to make sure to get rid of the hyena so that they didn't eat my RG. So, I bullied them around a little bit, and I led them off a cliff. Bye! I went back to craft some potions to get my health back up, and by that time, my raptor was just oh, about complete. Hexagon. I cryoed him up and headed back out to continue taming anything I could near my base. I came across a level 50 mammoth. That, I knew, would be super easy to tame. The only thing is, they take a very, very long time without kibble. We're talking about an hour and a half in real life. And I hadn't started my kibble farm yet, so this was gonna be a burner. But I said screw it, it's another one I can let sit and go off and do other things. I will only have to check on it after one full hour before it even wakes up. Once I got it down, I was on a roll. I continued to hunt down anything nearby that was low level. I tried to knock out a pig, but it was just too high of a level. And annoyingly, it was avoiding my shots like some kind of ninja. Oh, that's it right there. What? So, I just let it run away. Yet another reminder of how much I needed better taming weapons if I am not going to be using traps to tame. So I set my sights on an easy low level Anki and knocked him out with ease. Now I had three dinos knocked out and food in their inventory. As long as nothing kills them, I'll have three more to check off my list soon. But I didn't stop there, there was still a ton of dinos near my base that I could go after. So I found a low level Stego and hunted him down. I had been getting all kinds of taming prods in drops. I figured I'd give them a try since my primitive crossbow is so weak and I've never really used them. Could an ascendant level prod really be worse than a primitive crossbow? And the answer was yes. Oh my god, that did like nothing. Yes, it was. They are absolutely trash, worthless items. Only good for grinding because they always break after one use. It barely does anything but piss off the dino. And now, because they have no range, you're standing right in front of a mad dinosaur. Dumb. So I switched back to my basic crossbow and took down the mighty Stegosaurus. Now that I had four dinos down, I took a little time to manage them all. I checked their food and I checked their torpor. Since all were good and easy enough, I decided to add a fifth. There was a Triceratops near my tame fest, so I added him to the bunch. Once he was down, I figured that would be enough for now. I was already getting anxious with having to manage this many down tames. So I went and grabbed a nearby drop, farmed up some metal, and organized my base a bit. I continued to run around checking each dino and making sure nothing dangerous was spawning by. As the day went on, I just stuck nearby all my tames and just continued to harvest resources that I could later use for crafting. I found a low level Lystrosaurus to tame, and since it's a passive tame, I went ahead and started taming it. All I needed was to buy some rare flowers from the hex store and feed it. But even the low level was going to take some time, because again, one times rates are ridiculous. I figure I might as well stick with this one since I abandoned the last one, and I really had nothing better to do as I managed my five other downed tames. Eventually I got the Lystrosaurus tamed up and it was the first of the six. 
Right away after, the Yankee finished up and I went off to grab him as well. I had some time left before the others were done, so I went back and grabbed a couple of drops. And I am happy I did, because I got myself a uh, not great, but much better than primitive shotgun. As well as a Mastercraft tech rifle, which I couldn't use, sadly. But one day, I went back to my taming frenzy and grabbed the others that were finished. The Mammoth still had quite a bit of time left on and the RG was almost done, but safe to finish on his own. So I logged out so that I didn't have to waste too much time staring at my Mammoth slowly taming up. When I logged back in, the RG was all finished so I went off and cryoed him up, but the Mammoth still had a good amount of time left on him. I figured this would be a good opportunity to finish my base. Things were getting a little tight inside, so I put a roof on my house so I could build more on top. I honestly like the no roof open design, but I really needed more space. I finally filled my crop plots with fertilizer so I could start getting crops for kibble. I honestly didn't want to have to tame another dino the way that this mammoth was taming. It is brutal. Anyway, there was lots more to tame, so I got back to it. Right near my mammoth was a low level Dodicarus. It should be another quick and easy tame. Once I got him knocked out and fed, I went off to grab even more drops. At this point, I don't know how many drops I've gotten, but it's honestly just the beginning. Until I get a long neck and maybe a Rex Saddle BP, farming drops is gonna be a daily occurrence. While out and about, my mammoth finished up and I crowd him as soon as I got back. Afterwards, I put my newly acquired Stego to work and farmed up some narco berries so I could start mass producing narcotics. I split my meat and I got myself a ton of spoiled meat, threw it in the chem bench, and I made myself some narcotics. As the day was nearing the end, I checked on my Dodrickus and I fed him some narcotics to keep him sleepy. His progress was slow, but that should be all the narcotics I needed. As I waited patiently for my Dodrickus, I got some other crafting down around my base. Now that I had a usable shotgun, I made some gunpowder and started crafting shotgun ammo. My Dodrickus was all finished up and I cryoed him up. My in-game day was just getting started, but I was getting sleepy in real life and I decided to log off. When I logged back in, the world buff had finally ended and my reaper time shot back up to 4 hours. I was using the timer to keep track of my day, so when it jumped to 4, I kind of lost track. So I just decided to start day 8 here, now that it was at an even 4 hours. And, and honestly, I probably only added about 15 minutes of real time, but who really cares? I started the day with another loot farming session. Purple drops don't necessarily have the two most important things that I was looking for, but again, it was still early enough, there was plenty of structures and saddles and armor and things that I could use. I figured I'd dedicate a good half day to farming, or at least make my way around the whole map once. First few drops some decent stuff, a transmitter again I couldn't use, but it would give me good resources and a forge. This was actually another really nice grab. It's exactly why I continue to loot farm. But it was only three or four drops in when I discovered something that absolutely blew my mind. been searching for one of these for so long oh my god yeah so let me explain this is a near max level tech bow the most op weapon in the game for taming it can trank anything in seconds with its high torpor damage and insane fire rate but the anger you sense in my voice is because I needed to be a level 116 to use it, and I was not. Getting to level 116 would be an entire grind in itself. In other words, it was not happening in this 100 days, which means I would not be able to use this thing on any of my 150 tames. And what makes this so heartbreaking is I spent so many hours looking for this with my previous character on this cluster. If you think I've farmed a lot of loot drops with this character, ha! <laughs> I've farmed about a hundred times with my last character, and I never found this gem, at least not with this high of damage. This is just yet another reminder 
that Ark is a living, breathing game that knows what you are doing and when you are doing it. And it will intentionally give you everything you ever dreamed of only when you cannot use it. Constantly dangling that golden carrot in front of your face eternally because that is how Ark rolls. This was going to be a tough one to get off my mind. The only hope is holding on to this until one day I'd be big and strong enough to use it. Okay, let's try to move on from here and get back to the good vibes. After a few more drops, I was still so consumed by the thought of that tech bow. I honestly didn't want to keep farming loot because I was afraid I was going to get another high level one because, well, this is art. So I took a break to get back to what's really important, taming. I went to my favorite otter spot and I found a nice low level otter I could tame up. I hunted down some fishies, slaughtered them, and dragged their dead corpse to my new otter friend. After a few delicious feedings, we became buddies and he hopped up on my shoulder. At this point, my ADD is in full effect and I cannot focus on one single task. I keep bouncing around from one thing to the other as I had so much to do still. Since I was right near a mission terminal and once again seeing all the striders nearby, I decided to pop back into some missions. Also, it wouldn't hurt to get my hands on some more hexagons. So I jumped into the beta star dolphin. This is another one of my favorite missions and in my opinion it's really, really fun. Once you get used to it that is. Even the alpha version is pretty simple to solo. I eventually did that one too, so I'll explain my run through when I get there. For now, all you need to know is I blasted my way past some drones and turrets, saved the giant space whale, and destroyed the monstrosity at the end to collect my hexagons, as well as get one mission closer to taming my strider. Afterwards, I spent a little time dilly-dallying around my base. With no real plan in place, I just couldn't decide what to do next. But there was the Strider right next to my base, and I only needed four more missions to tame it. So once again, guided by the nearest shiny object, I went back to doing more missions. I figured I would knock out some more of the race missions because they are very easy and quick to do. So I jumped into the Down River Run canoe mission. And oh my god, this mission is so boring. It takes so long and the Gamma version is no challenge at all. It's been so long since I ran this thing and I completely forgot why. I've only done this mission one time ever. Because it sucks. So I finished that mission up and I Best moved on. Place. Good on you. I thought, hey, I'll do this one more time just to get closer to the Strider. But instead of doing beta, which I could potentially fail. I mean, how bad would it have been to have done this whole thing and not even pass it? So I hopped into the team downriver run on Gamma to instead. Pretty smart, Someone right? Nope. Turns out this one is even longer. I forgot about that too. I almost quit this as soon as I saw the amount of time it gives you to complete it. But I wanted that Strider so, so bad. And I knew it was only a matter of time before that one near my base despawned. So I sucked it up and I got That's to it. After six hours, I finally beat the mission. Thank God that's over. I'll never do that again, right? <laughs> now that the torture was over, I started up the Bulldog Fetch mission. You have to start it during nightfall, and so I activated and then went back to my base to gather up if the trench you items you need for the mission. Uh, I had quite a bit to craft up, so it took a little bit of time. Mostly the mission is easy. It does take a little time to complete, though, so I wanted to make sure I had enough resources so I didn't have to fly back to my base over and over. Once I got to the start of the mission, I started following the tracks. I got to the first area with all the bold dogs, so all you need to do is trink these little dudes up and then net them. You have some very aggressive baddies trying to eat them, but in Gamma they are pretty squishy, so my shotgun should be plenty. But as soon as I started tranking one, I realized how long this was going to take with my crappy apprentice crossbow. This mission, unfortunately, depends on your own equipment's level, and my crossbow was just not going to get this done. So I quit the mission and I cut my losses before I wasted any more time. I was starting to run out of quick missions I could do. Everything was going to take time or prep at this point, but I was so close to being able to get that strider right near my base. So I decided to hop back into Star Dolphin. I know I can do this mission in 12 minutes, which is less time than it took me to Should prep for that last mission that I ended up quitting anyways. Ready? Here we go.
On my way back, some mean dinos were trying to destroy my Strider. No, y'all, leave him alone. He didn't do anything to you. I headed back to base and did a little bit of farming, but the call of the Strider was just too strong. So I set my sights on the next mission. I was gonna go do Survive the Ark. I did a little bit of prep work, not enough as you'll see in a moment, and I headed to the nearest terminal. I started the mission and all things were going smoothly. First round, nice and easy. Second round, passed that with ease as well. But when I got into the third round, things did not go as planned. For one, I was wearing my basic armor, so that was my first mistake. This tech suit is really nice, but it offers virtually no protection. I should have brought better armor into the mission, because when you do this on official, there is a lot of lag. And it is very easy to lag out and get either caught in a dino or unable to escape. And that is exactly what happened to me in round three. Thank you, official servers. Well, that was disappointing. This day was almost over and I feel like I literally got no progress at all. But I still needed that strider so, so, so desperately. So I took a deep breath, swallowed my pride, and I went back to my base to get some good armor so that I could actually pass this gamma version. No shame in using armor when you don't need it because this is Ark and you actually might need it. So if I leg out this time, I'll at least be able to tank some hits before I get myself free. I got right back to where I failed last time and I continued on. Wave after wave, I just absolutely erasing everything with the tech bow. The shadow mains help make quick work of the enemies, but honestly they aren't needed in Gamma. Except maybe when you get a little bit sleepy. They provided me good protection when I got knocked out because my fortitude wasn't that high. I made it through to the final enemy, the Dodo Rex. collected my rewards. All in all, this took less than half a day, so not too much time wasted. Weirdly, I got a bunch of honey from the mission loot. This would be helpful, except I wasn't quite ready to craft things with it yet. So of course it prompted me to make myself a fridge. It will last a day and a half in the fridge, which might be enough time for me to get some things up ready to craft some kibble. As the reaper timer was getting lower and lower, I wanted to make sure to max out its levels by getting XP. Even this level 50 Reaper would be useful as long as it maxed it out. And the quickest method to do that when you don't have baby gigas or carks to slaughter is killing Spinos. So I floated down the river with my shotgun to find some of these water dwelling monsters. I found an Alpha Raptor, killed that first, and then continued my Spino Rampage. And in no time at all, I reached the max level of 75 for my baby Reaper, which was going to be born in just one hour's time. And on my way back to base, I spotted a really pretty feather light and I decided to tame it. These things are super quick to tame up and I already had its favorite food on me, a Z seed. So I fed it a seed and I floated around it until it was hungry again. And just like that, I had another feathery friend joining my squad. 
Once I eventually got back to base, I crafted up a nice little breeding room for my Reaper. When this thing pops out of me, it's really small and really fast, and you better have it trapped or it's gonna escape. As I waited these last few minutes for the big moment, I decided to head back out and do some taming. After all, the taming 1.5 times buff was still active, and I wanted to try to take advantage. Shortly after, I found a delicious 145 male classic Flash Rex. I got to work on trinking him with my crossbow. Now things in the wild don't naturally attack Rexes, but if another dino gets hit, it will defend itself. And that's exactly what this Carno was doing. It was absolutely shredding my poor Rex, who was so focused on me, it couldn't defend itself. I made the quick decision to shoot the Carno and save the Rex. But most of my shots hit the much larger Rex. Also, I have terrible aim, and I was helpless to watch a nice high-level Rex get eaten by a Carno and a Sabertooth. So I moved on. I honestly wanted some tech Rexes anyway, so I wasn't too mad about it. I found a level 90 Yeti not long after. This would be a good starter. I wanted to breed Yetis to get an imprinted one for boss fights, and the Yeti is really one of the worst things to breed. It takes so incredibly long to raise, like it just doesn't make sense. Once again, I was worried about other dinos destroying my tame. This is the downfall of not using a trap. But the Yeti held his own and used his roar to scare off enemies, so I didn't even need to bust out the shotgun. The Yeti was weak and near death, but I was able to knock him out in a relatively safe area. Once he was down, I just had to get out of render distance. Right near my base was a low-level Parasaur. A super easy tame to get, so I went ahead and knocked him out too and fed him some berries. The Yeti was a pretty passive tame, meaning he wouldn't wake up if I left him for a while, so I continued to get to work on checking off tames from my list. Next up, a Snow Owl. I got one to follow me to a nice, secluded area, and I started tranking. These things are really fidgety and can be annoying to hit, but luckily it doesn't take that many arrows. It was a low level, but I wasn't really in need of anything higher, so I knocked him out too, and I just put some regular meat on him as I watched over my three tames in my tame tracker. I went ahead and tried to squeeze in one more easy tame before the Reaper was ready. What could go wrong, right? I was on a roll. So I saw this easy Pteranodon and I took my shots. As he dropped into an enemy's fenced in base, I knew he was in a nice, safe spot. This should be easy. And just as I let my guard down, I was blindsided by a freaking Thyla. Thanks to this giant base, my character lagged out a bit and I couldn't properly jetpack away. Uh, now what? My feather light was on my shoulder at the time, so I was a bit worried. I didn't want to lose his colors. But when I spawned back in, there was a raptor next to my newly tamed parasaur, so I had to deal with him first. I dealt with the raptor and I raced back to my body. When I got there, bless his heart, he was trying to defend my honor and fight that Thyla himself. As soon as I got close enough, I whistled passive and follow, and he came calling. I outsmarted the Thyla and grabbed my stuff back but the Pteranodon was long dead. I still had a little bit of time left before the Reaper and I didn't just want to stand around wasting time. So I went back out and found another easy tame. It was a pack of dire wolves not far from my Yeti. I found a cool colored one and I started tranking. All his homies were on me as well, but I dealt with them the only way I know how. Once he was down, I let him be. Another tame I can leave and not worry about waking up. My owl was all finished taming, so I went back to grab him. And within just a few minutes to go, I decided to risk it and head over to get some mutton so I could tame up this Yeti. Since I didn't have kibble, I wanted to get the best tame possible. And mutton is almost just as good. But of course, on my way back, I got sucked into the void. Trouble with this glitchy spot on the map. I was legit starting to get worried because my Reaper timer was ticking. No, 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 come on, are you kidding me are come on this is so stupid oh my god and after a minor panic attack i was able to get up there and i was on my way with just three minutes to go i decided to risk it and go get my yeti a completely unnecessary risk to take with my reaper on its way but i did it anyways I put the mutton on the Yeti, then went back to base. I couldn't risk waiting for it to feed and then have to cryo it, so I just went back to base to properly birth my Reaper. I bought a bunch of meat from the Hexcon store and loaded up my body. But 
Now he was full of food and I could just let him sit there until he was a bit more mature. I went back to scoop up my yutty and my direwolf and I was off to bed. I spent the early part of the day upgrading my base a bit. I had gotten a forge from the drops and I wanted to get that place down so I could increase my metal production. But even more importantly, I knew I was going to need lots of charcoal for bullets, so a forge was a priority. I also put up some more storage. I wasn't quite ready to build vaults, so I just stuck with wooden cabinets. I also had some behemoth gates I had gotten from drops, so I put those down as well. The raptor attacks were getting annoying, and now that I had a reaper out, I wanted to make sure I had a safe place to raise babies. But I only had a couple, so that project was going to have to be put on hold. I put down the forge and then decided it was finally time to head up to another map. I was hesitant to do so with a reaper inside of me because while you can transfer, the more you do it, the more likely you are to get arced. I have lost plenty of things including reaper babies during a bad transfer. But now I could go freely with no worries, so I made my way to Valguero, a place where there is really only one thing of value, Deinonychus eggs. These were by far the easiest method to make kibble. The eggs are usually everywhere. They are lightweight so you can carry a bunch, and they are really easy to raise so you can quickly raise a bunch of females and produce your own egg farm. So I did my normal Valguero nest run, and I hit all the nests. I got a decent haul and made my way back to the terminal for transfer. I really just needed to get a male and a female, and I'd be happy. But when I checked my inventory, something wasn't right. Uh, what the f uh, where are the eggs? What the, what the hell? Did I not grab them? I was legitimately confused. I had no idea. I had to Google to see if there was a glitch or a common bug. Somehow I had never heard about. What the hell is going on? Before I transferred back, I went out to double check that I was actually picking up the eggs. And when I came across my next egg, I grabbed it and immediately noticed what was happening. The eggs were spoiling. Yup, these servers have been dead for so long, no one has cleared the nests. So the eggs have spoiled, but because Ark is Ark, the eggs don't actually disappear until you pick them up and they spoil in your inventory. And this sucked, because it just meant I would have to come back for another run after some hours go by so they can respawn. I decided I would check one more Valguero map on the cluster. But this one was the same situation. As frustrated as I was, I was still able to come away with one egg from each server. When I got back, I tried setting up some campfires to hatch the egg, but they needed more heat. I thought about using torches, but I was going to be hatching a lot of eggs in the future. So I decided to wait until I had a more permanent solution for egg hatching. The hope was to find an egg incubator in a drop, because I was still quite a few levels away from getting the engram. I went back to the Alpha Circuit Chase mission so I could get in the in-world buff for loot and hopefully find me an incubator. I started the day doing a full map loot run. Me and Meimei hit every loot drop we could. There was some good stuff in there but still not the main things we need. Rex saddle, long neck, and an incubator now. Now that I had my forge up, I wanted to get some more metal going. I still had no strider so I did things the old fashioned way. I grabbed my Anki and an RG and I got some metal. But farming metal this way was painstakingly slow with this low level Anki. I was legitimately faster farming by hand because I don't have to worry about weight. But still, I really, really, really needed a strider. For now though, my sights were still set on finding a Rex. Breeding was going to take some time and I needed to get that going ASAP. Once again I got excited and hopeful as I came across a 145 Rex in the middle of this colorful dino mosh pit. I tried getting his attention so he'd not go get himself killed, but he was much too interested in fighting off some stupid wolves instead of attacking me. I finally got him away from all the danger to a nice safe spot against the wall near a friendly non-hostile bear. And just as I was getting close to taking her down, the bear was like, nope. Ah. Take that, you asshat. Okay, moving on. I didn't have much time to feel frustration over that one because less than a minute later, I hit up a drop nearby. Ah, what do we have here? I was feeling pretty good right about now, but things just kept getting better. Literally a couple minutes later, after grabbing a few more drops, I found this beauty. 
I raced back to base to get more Trank Arrow so I could actually bring her down. With my primitive bow, it took some time to bring her down, and even with all the baddies around, it went down without a problem. I immediately got myself out of render so that it could tame up in peace. I made it back to base as the day was coming to an end. I decided to log off for a bit so my Rex could tame up without me wasting any time. When I logged back in, the Rex still had a ways before it was ready, so I wanted to get my egg incubator up and running. I didn't have any more space in my base, so I had to take some time to do some demoing. And I still didn't have my gates set up, so I just made a tiny little roof area so that I could keep things off the ground. I absolutely hate my base, as building is normally one of my favorite things in this game. Sadly, I just didn't have the time to spend on construction. So I just accepted my bootleg house and I placed down my egg incubator. So I got it set up and my Deinonychus eggs put in there. When I checked them, I was so freaking happy to see there was a male and a female. Out of all the eggs that spoiled and I only got two of them, this was pretty lucky. This meant I didn't have to go back to Valguero, only to find more rotten eggs. So I went ahead and checked the things that I had. Sure enough, I had two cryo fridges there. So I set those up on my new rooftop terrace. I also crafted a vault and placed that up top as well because seriously, these wooden storage cabinets are not getting it done. I had a bunch of junk stored in Dino so I got my base a little organized as I waited for the racks to finish taming. As it got closer and closer to being finished, I went ahead and made my way over to grab some mutton. I found a sheep in their normal location and I got to work. I used my ramshackle chainsaw to get more than what I needed and made my way back to my rex. So I scouted it out and I landed at a distance, grabbed the mutton, went over to drop it in the rex, and just like that, I had a level 238 tech rex. Once I got back to base to check its stats, I was quite happy. Woo, damn, that health. That health, damn, that's gotta be like 40 plus points. Damn, that is nice. We like that. Pretty solid health and melee. I figured it should at least be capable of taking on gamma bosses as long as I imprint a squad of them. I spent a large portion of the rest of the day organizing my base. I had so much junk piling up from all the loot, my OCD was seriously kicking in. I did the best I could even though I was sorely needing more vaults and really, really wishing I could find some tech storage and drops, but nothing yet. I also did some berry farming with the Stego to continue harvesting the endless amount of narcotics I will be needing. And to finish out the day, I took Mei Mei out for a lap around the map to see if I could spot another Rex so I could get breeding started. Unfortunately, I didn't find anything worthwhile taming, but I did get a bunch more loot that I was glad to hang on to, including another vault, which is exactly what I was just asking for. At this point, they were still a little expensive for me to want to have to craft on my own, so I welcomed it. So I actually started the day just by logging in quickly to hatch my Deinonychus eggs. They are very easy to raise, and with the in-world buff active, I knew I could let them get to juvenile age while I sleep in real life. So I set them up with some meat along next to my growing reaper and turned Mei Mei on to mommy mode. When I logged back in, this happened. I wonder who could have done this. Unbelievable. At least I didn't kill my Deinonychus, which were coming along nicely. So even though I was happy with having the male and the female, I knew if I got more eggs I could really speed up this process, so I ended up making my way back to Valguero. I knew by now more eggs would have spawned in and they shouldn't spoil, fingers crossed. I made my way to the first set of nests and I grabbed an egg and to my delight it in fact did not spoil. Hooray! I continued throughout the nest run and I grabbed as many as I could. Sadly there weren't that many that spawned in and I only came away with three eggs. And now that I had a male, I really only needed females and the males I could use to make kibble. So I was a bit disappointed with only having three. I tossed them in the egg incubator once back on Genesis 2 and shoot, only one of them is female. So I took the males out and I stored them in the fridge for kibble. I headed back out and searching for more Rexes. Breeding takes time and I really needed to get this process going. I found a nice easy low level 18 female tech Rex that I was gonna tame. 
This would be an easy tame and I could use it as a breeder to help combine stats faster. So I put a few tranks in it and I knocked it out in, this, in a safe spot. I didn't care about it much, uh, I wasn't concerned about it dying, so I went off and did some more searching for other tech rexes. I pretty much scoured the entire map and I didn't see anything. But as always, I hit a bunch of loot drops for some more quality stuff, because it never ends. While on Rockwell's side, I spotted a beautiful R Giga, and I really wanted to tame it. I was nowhere near ready to tame it yet, and it would take some time to get everything I needed. There was a good chance it would despawn by the time I got it all together, so it really wasn't worth it. I got some more mutton, flew back to where he was knocked out. Easy peasy, just like that, we got Tech Rex number two. I started out the day trying to make a little progress on my team. I hadn't really tamed much at all yet, and I needed to start moving. I found a nice low level Bronto near my base, and I took it down. Because I didn't have any kibble, this thing was gonna take forever to tame. So I let it be and I went back to my base to up my game even more. Before I went on any kind of mass taming run, I knew I was going to be important to get everything I needed. So I spent some time crafting up Trank Darts because my low level apprentice crossbow just wasn't cutting it. I got some wood for charcoal and crafted a bunch of needed things to get my darts going. The rest of the day was super unproductive. I spent a lot of time getting loot from drops, and I didn't really get anything great. I did also get myself a long neck, but it wasn't anything special. Still, better than the primitive one I had, and better than my current crossbow. Anyway, I felt like I really should have spent more time taming or being more productive while this Bronto takes forever. But without a strategy or planned out day, I guess this is what happens. I finished the day going over to Rockwell's side to farm up some fungal wood. I needed it for fish baskets because it was time for me to tame my favorite dino, the Shadow Mane. Before I ended the day, I put all the berries and narcotics on the Bronto it needed and that enabled me to log off. So when I logged back in, it was all tamed up. Immediately after that, I packed up my inventory and made my way to Crystal Isles. I had my sights set on taming up a Crystal Wyvern. These are the easiest Wyverns to get your hands on, and having one early on would help me get the other Wyvern eggs, as well as give me a flyer that can at least do a little damage. I love you, Mei, Mei but you are just not a fighter. Crystal Wyverns can be tamed by stealing their eggs, but you still need to raise them. The nice thing about these Wyverns, though, is that you can passive tame the adults. But in order to do that, you gotta get the right food. And they like Primal Crystal, which you can only get from other Wyverns. I got super lucky finding two high level wyverns. Higher levels give more crystals, which I was going to need as many as I could because one times taming rates, and they spoil relatively quickly. So it's not something I can just hang on to forever. I took one down at a time and I used my net gun to hold the other one down so it didn't melt me when I went up to grab the crystals. After I got crystals from both, I went over to where the friendly wyverns are to see if I could find a good level. The tropical variants are my favorite, and I definitely wanted to try to get one of those. After spending a decent amount of time flying around, I almost gave up before I spotted a perfect tameable tropical winner, a level 95. This was a good level because it wouldn't take excessively long, but it was high enough level that I could actually use it. This took about 10 minutes in real life to tame up, but I was able to tame this beautiful boy with no issues at all. I grabbed Mei Mei and off we went. But before I went home to Gen 2, I needed to make a quick stop at the honey cave. As I didn't have bees of my own yet, I wanted to grab some honey for kibble and get some poly for crafting while I was there. My wyvern made easy work of the squishy bees as I stole their honey. And off I was back to home Genesis 2. When I got back, my Deinonychus egg was ready to hatch, so I popped it open. And, lucky me, I got twins. This was a big deal, because I just went from one female to now having three. So it really is going to help increase my egg and kibble farm get up and running. I was pretty hyped. 
And to finish the day, I took my new Bronto out, who is now my best berry farmer, for a quick berry run. Because I still did not have a Strider. Man, that was like my first priority. It's like day 20, I still don't have one. Anyway, something I thought would happen by day 5, but all the sidetracking and underestimating of how long the missions would take, looking at you for your mission, it just didn't happen. Oh, and by the way, that drill strider by my base, it's gone, because, well, of course it is. I was thinking about that R Giga I came across earlier, and I decided to go ahead and go after it. Because I didn't have kibble, I needed a fridge nearby that could hold my mutton. So I set up a quick little makeshift base right by the Giga. I spent like a third of the day just prepping for this, getting narcotics, getting meat, and setting up the fridge. And because it's Genesis, I just assumed I would not need a trap. But as I hovered over it, I quickly realized I was wrong. The last time I used this method, I had a tech bow, which makes everything in the game go night-night really quick. But my low level long neck was just not putting enough trank into this monster, and every time he goes and kills something, it wakes him all the way up. Meaning tranking this thing without a trap would literally actually be physically impossible. So I gave up. I didn't even have any metal to make a trap, so I figured I'd grab a little from space on my way back. I wasn't necessarily planning on going right back for the Giga, but I knew I wanted to have a trap ready just in case I came across another one. Anyway, after another disappointing moment of defeat, I headed back out in search for more Rexes. Once again, no luck on the Tech Rex side. I kept coming across flesh Rexes and debated on just going for those. They were common and just as good. The only difference is Tech can be higher level coming from a while. But I decided against it this time. Before the day ended, I wanted to at least feel a little productive, so I hit up the slide and glide mission so I could reset the world buff for dino raising to make sure my Deinonychus and Reaper finish growing ASAP. And the very last thing I did was continue to get a little more metal to stock up for anything I needed so I didn't have to farm it anymore for a while. I started the day doing some things I have been doing the last few days. More loot drops, more Rex hunting, because it never ends. This was going to be a common practice until I got the things I needed. So after searching for what felt like hours over the last few days, I was getting annoyed. I came across a 150 flesh rex female and I decided it must be tamed. At the very least, now I could look for both a male regular rex and male tech rex to increase my odds. And whichever I found first, I would just start the breeding process. So I just had to shoot the one I wanted while all these other rexes try to foolishly reach me even though they never will. And after lots and lots and lots and lots of darts, I finally got her down. So it was time to head out a render and let her tame up. I went back to base and did a few maintenance things like crafted up some more bullets and I farmed up some more berries to make narcotics. This girl was going to take over an hour in real life to tame, even with much. So I got busy on other things. I continued throughout the day and into day 20, searching for Rexes. I checked Rockwell's side, hoping for a better outcome, but still no luck. I was getting pretty frustrated at this point. This is how Ark goes. These Rexes are normally everywhere, but now when I am looking for one, I can't find Squat. So after another crappy day and more useless loot, I went back and did a quick meat run. I hadn't even thought about it before because of the hexagon store. Meat runs were kind of a waste of time, especially since I didn't have a gig up. But I got some meat with my Rex anyways, a much slower process than I would have preferred, but you gotta do what you gotta do. I found a sheep and I slaughtered him to get some money, and off I was to tame my Rex. The day was coming to an end as I made my way back to base. 